this Photoshop alternative feels illegal to know. I've been using Photoshop daily now for 16 years or so, mainly for my illustration work and for creating learning resources and presentations for my students. Usually I'm using things like the colour adjustments and masking and simple text editing. I started a new job at Easter and I was given a pretty low spec laptop, which is fine for simple admin tasks, but if I install the full Adobe suite onto it, it's going to absolutely kill the machine. So I either have to find an alternative stock image, which isn't ideal because I don't have control over that, or I have to wait until I get home in the evening and use my own machine. That's until I stumbled upon the PhotoP app, which has made my life so much easier. PhotoP is so similar to Photoshop, I really don't know how they've got away with it. But if you're using Photoshop for things like color adjustments and masking, then stop throwing away your hard-earned cash and use PhotoP instead, which is free. And because it's web-based, there's nothing to download and install, and it works on any machine, including your phone. So I'm going to walk you through the steps I used with PhotoP to create this image for the hair and beauty team that I support at college. So if you're ready, let's jump in. Head over to photop.com and we're going to create a new project. From here, we'll select the size of our document. We're creating an A4 poster, so we'll choose the print tab and then select A4 from the list. Next, we'll drag and drop the image of the model we'll be using and resize it by dragging the corners and double clicking to place. The image is a little dark, so we'll lighten it by going to Image, Adjustments, Brightness Contrast. Check the Use Legacy button and then adjust the brightness and contrast sliders to your liking. And click OK. So now we need to add our text. Choose the text tool here and choose your font from the list here. I really like using a big slab savvy font for images like these. So I'm using Montserrat and I'm choosing black as this is the heaviest version of the font. I'll make the font size 250 pixels and then we can type out our first line of text, hair and beauty. And use the move tool to position the text to the left. We can turn off the visibility of the model layer to see the text better and then with a the text layer selected, we'll duplicate this layer by using the shortcut Control plus J. And then use the move tool again to reposition the second line of text. Double click the text icon in the layer palette to highlight the second text layer and then type the second line of text, Team. Now we want to line up the text with the first one. So we need to enlarge the text by going to Edit, Free Transform and drag in the corners of the bounding box that appears. Again, we'll use the Control J shortcut to duplicate the team layer. Double click the text icon of this layer and type in the third line of text, values. And we'll go to edit, free transform and resize the text to bring it in line with the others and the move tool to refine its position. Now we're happy with the placement of the text, we need to merge all three layers into one. To do this, select the top text layer and then shift and select the bottom layer, and then use the shortcut Control plus E to merge the selected layers. Now that the text all one layer, we can use this to create a clipping mask shape. To do that step, drag the text layer directly underneath the image layer. Oh, I've gone too far. It needs to be the layer directly beneath the image like that. Now we select the image layer and right click on the layer and choose clipping mask from the drop down. And there you go, the image is clipped to the shape of the text. You can reposition the image by using the move tool. So we need to see more of the top half of the image to make it look as though the text is appearing from the bottom part. So with the layer selected, we press Ctrl and J to duplicate the image and then right click on the duplicated layer and uncheck the clipping mask and your whole image reappears. Let's turn off the visibility for a second and then choose the rectangle selection tool and drag a selection over the top part of the image right at the very top of the text. With that selected, we can create a layer mask which will mask out the rest of the image by clicking the layer mask button here in the layers palette to get this effect. We're nearly there. We just need to add the rest of the text to complete the image. If you're finding value in this video, please give it a like. And while you're here, make sure you subscribe for more tech tips for teachers.
Okay, let's get it finished. Choose the text tool and click on the canvas. We'll set the font size to say 150 and change the style to regular. And we can type out the values that the team have agreed on. So committed, creative, and caring. Nice. Let's use the free transform tool to resize and reposition the text. We can make sure the text is centered by clicking Control A to select all, and then with the move tool selected, click the centered button here. It looks good as it is, but I think a tweak to the text color will really make it pop. Double click the text icon again in the layers palette, then come up to the top here to choose a color. We can pick a color from within the image, which will help to bring everything together. This darker blue here. Boom. There you go. That looks good. Brilliant. We're ready to export. Go to File, Export, and we'll choose JPEG as we don't have any transparent areas that we want to preserve. We'll set the quality to the highest setting and choose our destination for our final image. And a few seconds later, we've got our image ready to share. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again for another Tuesday Tech Tip.